119 Broadway nightclub. It's the first Sunday of the month, and I'm going to do the band a solid, and I'm going to fill in for them, okay? Gary Graham is a man of many parts. In the early 1980s, Gary was in the prime of his law career as a renowned maritime trial attorney in San Francisco. Among other accomplishments, he led the charge for the rights of severely injured Spanish sea workers in the North Sea oil fields who had been denied meaningful medical coverage or pensions by their employers. It was a signature victory and changed the lives of many. In 1984, however, his life took a much different turn. Just for the record, um... Amory and I founded the nightclub in 1984 in Fairfax, California. And uh, it had a continuous run of nightly live music for 37 years. In 1984, Gary and his beloved wife Amory took a chance and founded 19 Broadway, a nightclub in downtown Fairfax. He's hosted live music with the help of his 19 Broadway good time band every night since up until March of 2020, that is. It stopped during the pandemic, but I'm happy to report that I have a new team that's gonna be taking it over and the music will be uh, picking up again in uh, June, no later than July. He spoke of the effect that live music has on a city and the importance of performing as a musician. You know, music in a community like Fairfax, Danny, is a gift. To the, to the community because the, um, the effect live music has on everyone in the community, it's a catharsis, it's a medicine for the soul. And I don't have to explain to you because I know you're a musician, how important it is that musicians play music because that's what we're here for. And that's where we find our joy. So through the years, we booked over a couple hundred thousand musicians who are all different, but who all find their joy. And we've had, you know, well over a million fans come to the club. So it turned out to be what began with Amory and I as an inspired folly uh, turned into a, this venture that's gone on far more than we had ever realized when we started. But that's the nature of an entrepreneur. Owning a nightclub, however, isn't all fun and games. According to Gary, it was years before 19 Broadway was making any real money. Well, Danny, running a nightclub is like running a business. And every business does have a challenge. And the object of a business is you should be profitable. So it took a, a while for Amy and I to figure out that when you do book live music, with these bands every night, you have to make a profit every night so that you can continue to keep the doors open. So basically as a business, it was a challenge, but we seem to, have, um, after a couple of years, we started getting rolling and we, we started off really as amateurs and then we developed into being uh, more professional as, as, the years, as the years went on. In the 37 years that 19 Broadway has been around, some huge names have held gigs there. Chet Baker and Mose Allison have graced its stage to name a couple. But no matter who it is, Gary has a unique and uncanny ability to relate with people and find the commonality, especially with musicians. When you had a business that has live musicians every night, and after the gig they come upstairs to the green room, and you hang out with these musicians, uh, the memories are enormous. One of the best memories, I, mean, I have so many of them. I remember there was a famous horn player called Chet Baker back in the 50s. He was a great trumpet player. And he came upstairs and he said, Gary, what you want to do is whistle the tune before you play it. I don't know if I've mentioned Danny, but I've been playing piano and entertaining since I've been five years old. It's in my nature, it's what I do. I started off as a two-year-old entertaining my, my mother's friends and believe me, the applause gets addictive. I've got a memory of Mose Allison. I don't know if you remember Mose Allison, but um, he was a classic Americana music and he, um, he wrote some beautiful songs himself 
And he taught me when I used to introduce all the bands, he said, Gary, wait until the last moment before you mention who the artist is. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is the distinct pleasure of the management to present to you the evening star attraction. Here they are, back after their exclusive three-year tour of Europe, Scandinavia, and the subcontinent. Won't you welcome from Calumet City, Illinois, the show band of Julia Jake and Elwood Blues, the Blues Brothers. So you learn from these, these professionals and I had the Count Basie Orchestra there and my genre, Danny, is uh, back to my father's day and age. My band is involved with the 20s, 30s and 40s and 50s, the beautiful love songs in the Great American Songbook. But basically we featured every genre of music and Amory and I accept all genres. What happens in each one of them you find these musicians who have found their joy and just let them extemporize, let them be themselves and you'd be amazed how often they get in the pocket, not just with the band, but with the audience. And it's almost like New Year's Eve every night. It has that possibility. The beating heart of 19 Broadway was and continues to be Gary's passion for entertaining and lifelong love affair with music which has kept the club alive and running all these years. He's gravitated towards the spotlight ever since childhood, likely inspired by his parents who were also musicians. Basically, I had a mother who could sing a song and bring a tear to your eye, but I'm also the son of a professional pianist and organist. And a quick story, you'll like this one. My father went to the University of Nevada and put himself through uh, college by dressing up in a tuxedo three days a week and playing in a whorehouse. So I'm the proud son of a whorehouse piano player. And like my father, I've always had a gig on, on Sunday nights. It's an interesting story how that works out. <laughs> Gary is also a proud generational San Franciscan and has a deep seated love for the city's culture. I asked him what it is about San Francisco that makes it such a special place. San Francisco, you know, I'm a third generation and we have so much pride. And the reason we have so much pride is probably the most beautiful city in the world uh, physically, but it also is mu musicians, artists are drawn to the creativity that's been totally in San Francisco's history. They've got a rich music history and arts history. so. It just couldn't be a better place as an incubation for musicians throughout the years. The history in San Francisco and music, it's remarkable. Being a lawyer and a performing musician initially seemed like polar opposite career paths to me. How could you deal with the stress of battling other attorneys in a court of law and then go play a gig later that night? I was curious how he balanced those two aspects of his life, but learned that there's much more similarity than meets the eye. Basically, for a guy like me, Danny, I was a natural born entertainer. And my uncle, Paul Velotin, an attorney, he mentored me and I knew I was gonna be a trial attorney right from the age of 12. That's all I ever wanted to do. But when you're a trial attorney, there's a certain showbiz aspect to presenting trials to a jury. It's necessary for you to prepare. It's necessary for you to present. And it's necessary for you to have the empathy that you can transfer to the jury the pain and suffering of your client. So there's an awful lot of, um, there's an awful lot of convincing a jury of your client's case and pain and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to say that I had a 38 year career and uh, I lost one case and I was uh, very good at what I did because I was 
you know, your dad will tell you how fun loving I am, but when it came to trying cases with guys who were in wheelchairs for the rest of your life, I was serious as a, as a heart attack and uh, maintained very close relationships with most of my clients through the years. You know, Dan, in this world, it's all about personal relationships. In your business, no matter what it's going to be, you want to hold these friends and these relationships close and you always want to play a straight hand. Don't deal in lies. Always be trustworthy. These are the lessons that you're going to be teaching your kids. These are the same lessons your father taught you. Having a career as illustrious and colorful as Gary has had, I wondered what conclusions he had come to looking back on it all. What advice did he have for someone in this world just looking to find happiness? This is an interesting life because there's so many things that you can do. I suggest that what you do, try and find your passion. And musicians are so lucky because they have, have a passion. But also, no matter what you do in life, if you find something that you can be true to yourself, my father always taught me, always be true to yourself and thus to no man can you be false. So be yourself, find your passion, and what is life but a few inspired follies. So you gotta take a bunch of chances and sometimes there's no net, but hell, jump, because that's what makes life exciting. But it's up to your judgment. You talk to a lot of successful businessmen and they said, you gotta take the risk and you gotta fail and then and you, learn uh, from it. and then what? And learn, from and learn from it. Sure. And I look at your generation. I have so much hope and faith in your generation leading us into the future because um, you seem to be, you seem to be connected uh, to the world, and you're going to make a big, big difference. Just, um, just be honest and play a straight hand and things to work out. You've got a brilliant future, young man, and you and your brother and uh, uh, we're both, Amory and I are both very proud of you and as the father of four children and grandfather of uh, five children, um, we can say with, with all confidence that you just want to create a river of love for your family. You want to support your ch children, tell them how much you love them. Make sure that you're there for them every step of the way, just like your father has been for you and like we've been for our family. And that river of love, of love, my grandparents called it, it passes on to future generations. Gary Graham is truly a one of a kind man. His love for this world and those around him is infectious and his commitment to his values and passions is nothing short of inspiring. His story made me realize that some of the best things in life aren't planned at all and that you need to take some chances if you want to get the most out of the time that we're here. Because after all, what is life but a few inspired follies? Thanks so much for showing up. You don't know what it means to us. Help us sing our theme song. Are you all ready now? Enjoy, Enjoy yourself. yourself. It's later than you think. You gotta enjoy yourself while you're still in the pink. Yeah, you, this virus is gonna go by much sooner than you think. So enjoy yourself, enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. No need to applause, thank you. Love you all, all our beautiful fans. Hi, Ben.